Next talk is case study interception of torrent traffic and what should we do about it by Jelena Ivanovic. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And once again, sorry for being a little late. Uh, the Trakia workshop was I, was, I was totally devastated. So thank you for your patience. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me here. And I would take this opportunity to present in front of the activists and activists and people who are really skilled. A uh, little study uh, from Serbia, which is my study and my friends. Uh, two of us basically worked on it. Uh, my friend, which is a, a PhD in law, and uh, like 10 activists, and most of them were quite anonymous people, at least to me, because we were working in Pacebin, so I didn't really, I couldn't really identify people who were working with us. Afterwards, I heard that uh, some of them were from police academy, <laughs> which is basically good, because that means that law enforcement is on our side in this case. Uh, this is a little case study, which is, uh, my aim was to present both technical and legal aspects of uh, interception of torrent traffic. And I don't want to disappoint you, it will be more legal and more about human rights and a little bit less about the technical uh, thing. Uh, technical way to intercept torrent traffic are, I mean, it's already told on DEF CON, so you can, you can actually watch the movies and the animations how torrent traffic is intercepted. Um, because I'm a pirate, we based our, our study on, on things which are, you know, within the core of pirate values, and that's, that's basically human rights. So, uh, the study includes analysis of actual conflict of interest when it comes to three rights. The right to privacy of communication, the right to uh, protect protection of personal data, and of course copyright law. These three groups of rights are guaranteed by constitution in almost every country, and every serious country would take measures to do something when they, when they see that um, users are receiving threat letters. So what basically happened uh, from last year uh, and before that even, uh, the right to, to share files is guaranteed by European Convention of Human Rights. And it says in Article 10, it says everyone has the right to freedom of expression, the rights shall include freedom to hold opinions and to receive and impart information and ideas without interference of public authority. And of course, regardless of frontiers. And that's really, really about internet. This changes the way we communicate. This changes the way we get to know things, get to know each other, the way we fall in love, the way we function in our lives. People are leaving a huge trails of data every time they go online and whether they are per making a purchase or uh, trying to find some um, meteor prognosis or whatever, whether report or uh, whether they are trying to, to sell or buy or, or just chat. So uh, this means that that of last year nobody, for, uh, nobody in the European Union can be charged for sharing, sharing culture and that's based only on this article and this is the decision of the European Court. So nobody can be convicted just for breaking the copyright monopoly. Uh, when you're a pirate, uh, you usually, we usually don't use uh, things like copyright industries. We say copyright monopoly or copyright regime. And there is a reason for that. Copyright monopoly is actually a, a, co you know, a factory, a huge factory which made their job once and they're trying to live from that thing in the years like 50 or 60 years afterwards. And basically what they are doing together with DMC agencies and with law offices is that they are trying to supplement their profit by the royalties they are trying, they're trying to collect on the internet. Can you hear me well? Okay. So, um, nobody can be convicted for breaking the copyright monopoly law and the bar for convicting was raised considerably. This can be expected to have far-reaching implications in the years to come. And I really hope that judici the judiciary will follow uh, the recent changes. But in confirming that the copyright monopoly stands at odds with human right. File sharing, as I stated previously, is really a state of mind. Every time we go online, we're conducting more and more of our daily business and through our mobile devices, through our tablets. Uh, we use the internet and our smartphones and tablets to make purchases and research medical conditions, plan vacations, interact with friends and relatives. 
do our jobs and map the travel routes. So these changes have fueled the growth of a multi-billion dollar industry that largely operates hidden from the people's view. Today, a wide range of companies collect and ma maintain data on hundreds of millions of consumers, which they, of course, analyze, package and sell generally without consumer permission or input. So, is there a way to know what companies are doing with your data? That's the point of this little case study. Laws define file sharing legal to some extent, and file sharing is legal for private use. You can download for private use in Serbia, in Switzerland, in many European countries, and nobody can charge you for that. The bar in Serbia is raised for, uh, for instance, if cyber unit, if cyber crime unit wants to, you know, uh, got hold of somebody who is who is actually uh, not abiding by the law of copyright, the bar is raised recently to, I think, to. 100,000 sold copies, and then you have to really make a significant amount of money of it. So by selling to 100,000 copies, you actually can get into scope of cybercrime unit. Before that, any uh, downloading is quite legal, and nobody can actually charge you for that. Um, oops. Okay. <laughs> So you can see Mickey Mouse, and basically this is what people, uh, admins, are using to explain uh, what kind of situation they found in their companies. Users generally have no means of knowing uh, the extent and the nature of information that corporations and law offices and DMC agencies are actually collecting about them and share with others for their financial gain. Dozens of adult companies are using copyright trolling tactics to supplement their income, and I guess you heard all about copyright rolling, right? Copyright rolling, it's on the Wikipedia page, it's, it's a, a mechanism, a tactic that companies are using to extort the money from users, or to make threats. In Serbia we had a case of uh, simple making threats, not really extortion, nobody asked, you know, to pay for, for download, downloaded content, but um, and there was a case recently uh, just before this conference that um, th those letters are actually upgraded, but I will tell you a little bit later about it. So, how do those companies are doing it? There are five scenarios of obtaining the data. What we got as a pirate party of Serbia or as something which is um, um, a good basis for that because, you know, the limit for the party is quite, it's quite it takes a little fortune to, to found it. But what we got is the letter from users where their ICP is informing the user that uh, the user downloaded illegally and authorized content from the Samtoran site and, and in that letter ICP states that uh, they need to delete content from the hard drive because they will take uh, further measures. So, that's quite broad speaking about it. It's like, okay, we know that you downloaded content and you didn't obey, you, you didn't follow the rules of behavior of in, on, on internet, which is quite obscure, obscure. I mean, who are they to, you know, form the rules of behavior? And they are making threats, like that they are actually take some further measures and legal measures. And of course, they don't call, they don't mention any law in that. So. What really happened is that after receiving these kind of letters, and they're circulating for years, and even now, as we speak, somebody's getting those letters. Those letters are sent usually via snail mail, snail mail, and uh, not only to, to the person who downloaded, but to their parents. So my friend got the letter because of downloading some glam rock from 80s, but her mother also got the same letter via snail mail, printed out, with a stamp and with the signature of her ICP. In our case, it's a unit or unit. So there are five scenarios. We, we were trying to figure out how is it possible that company, which is your internet service provider, actually knows what you're doing online. And uh, I can't do this lecture be without mentioning Snowden. I mean, this is just post-Snowden era and if anything is good about Snowden's whistleblowing is that people are not trusting to anything right now and they are questioning everything and asking for security audit. But this happened a little bit before Snowden, a few months. 
So uh, we, were, we were really curious about how, how does it happen? I mean, is it really normal that your internet service provider knows what your traffic is about, knows what you're doing online? And of course, it's quite dangerous. That means that you need to use VPN in your own home, which probably many of you actually use. But um, majority of people is, you know, out of that scope and out of that story, and they are really, you know, relaxed when they go online. So one of the possible scenarios, we will go through five of them, is that FBI confiscates your data. I figured that this scenario is here because people are watching American movies too much. And of course there is a video on YouTube about uh, King.com which and whose house was raided. And it's really like American movie style. There are, there are forces which were raiding his house with the uh, choppers and with guns and everything. And it really looked like harassment of a of an narco, narco boss and not, not a file share or owner of a mega upload. So in this case, people were thinking like, okay, there is an FBI and they confiscate the data from Mega Upload or some other site, for instance, Rapid Share. And uh, because copyright holders got hold of your IP address, it's quite normal that, yeah, that they let you about it, that they let you know about it. So this scenario is described as a seizure by FBI and this means that public authority of the country will legally, under the law of that country, do uh, the specific information uh, indicating a violation of copyright law forward to your internet service providers and put them on disposal of copyright holders. Also, the copyright holders uh, are thus legally uh, entered, you know, they, they are thus legally um, got hold of the data which can make uh, probably you know, the, which can actually prove that you are violating copyright law. So, there is one big problem in this. Nobody can order ICP to give out the data about users. And especially not police force of some other country. Even in case of King.com, uh, it was New Zealand police which was arresting him. So, whenever FBI wants to do anything with any user on internet, they need to talk to the local police office, they need to talk to local police department and public prosecutor and actually get a court order. So, every country has uh, the right to decide if they are actually, um, if there is anything which should be uh, part of the charge because American laws are totally different from European. So if a foreign government body transmits data through the channels of interstate cooperation and that relates to bilateral or multilateral you know, um, contracts within police, then uh, they can turn to Serbian prosecution for cybercrime, which happens quite often, and the prosecutor will assess uh, the data and whether the elements of the offence are existent uh, according to Serbian law and they will issue a court order. So there is no way that FBI can get hold of your data legally or act upon it. The other scenario is that uh, DMC copyright agency or law agency sets up their own torrent server and then they monitor who downloads the content. Although this is imaginative and practically applicable way uh, as we have been informed, a relatively common way to collect information about users and torrents, this scenario has one major flaw. It boils down to the law on copyright. And it is only the author or copyright holder that has the right to publish the work and has the, the right to determine ways of sharing. The author has the exclusive right to authorize or prohibit the recording and reproduction of his work in whole or in a part, by any means, in any form, by any permanent or temporary uh, direct or indirect law. If the author decides that he wants to share his work with the internet community for free, like putting torrent with that part of it, it comes down to the manner of, um, of the publication or copying, um, internet users who download it, they do not violate any copyright law. Therefore, it's needless to say that any subsequent action of the copyright holder in preventing such activities or disclosure of the identity of the user using the generosity of the author will be illegal. Otherwise, putting the content on torrents despite of author's will is a crime itself. 
The third scenario is like, okay, they're tracking our IP addresses. And um, as I said before, this happened before Snowden, so <laughs> we were really curious about how that can happen. Probably it's the simplest scenario, but it is still illegal. Uh, user's IP address is a personal information and as such is protected by a special legal regime and may not be used for anything other than the purposes which are pre-agreed. Which, which means basically that if you go to torrent site and if you download the torrent client, you accept terms of services and in those terms of services it doesn't say we will provide your IP address to the police. It doesn't say anything like that. So, uh, you don't uh, give your content, consent for, for, for usage of your IP address, but for one scope which is defined previously. There is a logical fallacy also in the assumption that in torrent files which are publicly available on the internet, any user has given the consent to make his or her IP address public, and that anyone can do anything, whatever he wants. So, it's handy explanation, but it's no law abiding. The user has given a content to its IP address only for file sharing, and it doesn't mean that IP address can be recorded, forwarded to third parties, or used by copyright holders for any other purpose. Fourth scenario was that uh, providers on behalf of copyright holders perform continuous interception. So basically this is the same as the previous scenario, it's the same as tracking. Uh, this has already been explained, and um, in a lot of in a lot of studies, not only from people who are, you know, studying law or or, or you know people from the internet, and there are simply there are things which can't be unbroken. This is really about breaking the trust. If your ICP is tracking your IP address and forwarding it to a third party, how do they think that they will you know retain their users, retain their their consumers? because once broken, trust can be hardly repaired. As we speak uh, in the moment, right now, those, those emails and, and snail mails with threats are still incoming to the addresses of people in Serbia. So, uh, the most obscure thing is how your internet service provider knows what movie you downloaded one year before you become their customer. And how do they know what movies you keep on your phone? not only on laptop. Um, I'm really not sure what, what we can do as private persons, but the only legal way is to ask for court order and to follow, to follow the law, which basically means the only fully legal way, why is this happening? The only fully legal way to get information about users is to get a court order. Um, this stands for criminal and civil proceedings as well, and your data can be forwarded to third parties only if you're already a suspect, which means that there needs to be some paper about it and there needs to be some stamp and some signature. As an anarch, as someone who believes in freedom of internet, and yes, you have a question? Yes, I have a question. Okay. A few months ago, there was a few cases of funny bugging. Mm -hmm. So where uh, the holder of the rights on the movie shared you know, this on, on, on the torrent and then sued the people who downloaded this. Yeah, I've heard about it. Yeah, it's, it's on torrent freak already. Um, it's also illegal because the author needs to give his consent to, to file sharing. So if copyright agencies are not respecting the will of author, and they're trying to entrap the users, they are making double, you know, they are making double crime. It's like Sabu. They do illegal things and think that they all get away with it. And usually they do. That's the, 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 the thing about American law. But in Serbia, what happened was that our government actually reacted. And it was a little bit hard for me, which I'm one of the, those persons that, you know, we believe that uh, the role of the state should be reduced to the the, the least possible role, like a night watchman, like just showing some light and showing some direction and not, to not really to interfere into what we do in our lives. But in this case, our government reacted. And what you see right now is a screenshot from a website of Commissioner for Public Importance. Uh, uh, we presented that case study and he decided to take some action. 
So what they did is that this case sparkled an investigation into how ICPs are handling our private data. So uh, it happened just before WikiLeaks. It happened, I think, in October last year. And since then, there was, uh, there was few ways to investigate what ICPs are really doing. First, they sent some questionnaire. And in that questionnaire, it was like 50 questions about uh, who can access private data, do, they per do that person have some you know, certificate about security, um, do they track, do ICPs actually track who access data about users, is there a note about it, is there a reason, and of course, is there a court order for that, because this is just how law, um, law is quite clear about it. So, the Commissioner for Information of Public Importance and Personal Data Protection uh, monitored the implementation of the provisions of the law on personal data protection and it happened among, I think, 426 internet providers and of course some of them were cell phone carriers as well. And we have some empty slides. <laughs> okay. Uh, about copyright trolling, I would really like you to adopt this as your own rule, just like you say no to data mining, you should say no to copyright ruling. Because if we didn't react, if government didn't react, and if they decided to let it go and not to investigate how our data, data are intercepted and forwarded to third parties which present themselves as a copyright holders, this is what can happen. Uh, this event, and it's really regrettable, uh, took place, I think, seven days ago in Finland. And what really happened is that some law office uh, sent a letter with extortion and blackmail. Like, we noticed that you downloaded the content illegally and we want you to pay 600 euros for that. Uh, they just chose the wrong person because they sent it to a, to a local party, party captain. So, of course, he knows what to do, and he said publicly to them, I don't have any intention to pay 600 euros. But uh, they demanded they remanded 600 euros settlement from a Finnish tour exit node operator. So, our friend Sebastian Maki was running a tour node, and he was charged for sharing some porn illegally. So, his letter is basically about porn. <laughs> Faced with the growing threat of online file sharing, uh, the law agency committed um, to you know, turning piracy into profit. And this is what's happening all around the world. The comp companies just try to supplement their profit with all kinds of extortion and depression. So, the point of this case study, you can find everything in Serbian on website piratska.org, which is a website of a pirate party which will be founded someday, and uh, in different law journals. Uh, the point is that nobody is authorized, uh, and it doesn't matter how they introduce themselves, whether they are copyright holders or, you know, anyone except the police uh, is actually banned from intercepting your data and from forwarding your data. So, um, you can find it on Pirate Party website, you can find it on internet, you can also find, if you read, if you can read Serbian, you can find the reactions of internet ICPs, of internet service providers, which were quite dull. They said like, oh, but the law is not clear enough and we really don't get it and why are you charging us for this? Uh, what happened during the investigation, uh, how they are handling our data, is that uh, nearly 20 letters came with the same spelling mistakes to a government body, to the Commission of, of Information for public, of Public Importance. So, which means that basically they are crafted in on one place, together with spelling mistakes and together with a, with a clear statement that they don't really understand the law on privacy. So, I would like to invite you to uh, read Torrent Rick and Wikipedia page Copyright Rolling and to find out what's happening in your countries, because if you don't stop it now, it can go really, really far. And this is not really about us, because we usually can't be tracked easily, but majority of people are not hiding their IP address, they're not hiding what they're doing, and they're really posting really many stuff online. 
So as a pirate, I invite you to just contribute to the future in this direction. Thank you.